Jump Tail Stuff for this week's um, news for all of EVs, electric vehicles, and that includes a little bit of everything. We're going to talk through um, a little bit of different types of news that um, I found this week, pass it along to you guys. So, if you enjoy this, I'm going to try to do this once a week. Uh, like, subscribe, so you'll see when I come out with new videos. So, the first thing um, that we're going to talk about is um, something I did in my last video on was the F-150 Ford Lightning, right? Um, so, that car or that truck was listed at having 300 miles of range or 230 miles of range. But MKBHD, um, who has another YouTube channel, very popular YouTube channel, actually had the ability to get the F-150 Lightning at his studio and check it out. And so um, his entire video is linked down in the description. But one of the big things that came out from that video um, that you know, Ford didn't announce, they're kind of keeping quiet, I guess, the EPA estimates of 300 miles and 230 miles. Uh, they said were, were with a thousand pounds loaded in the vehicle. So um, when he had the truck at his studio, he noted that it was at 80% state of charge, roughly 80% state of charge. And it said that the truck had the ability to travel 367 miles. Now he had the long range battery version, the, the full, you know, loaded out one. And so if you do the math for that, um, you know, from 80% with 367 miles, that equals around 460 miles of range, right? Um, at for a hundred percent charge, I mean, that's pretty impressive, right? Um, that's more than majority of the vehicles out there. Now, the other really big thing uh, that interests me about that is the cheaper, ten thousand dollar cheaper version. For 230 miles, I'm assuming is also for a thousand pounds in the vehicle, right? I would assume it's the same. Make that assumption, 230 miles, if you have just say, you know, a 200 pound person in the car, or even 300 pound person, you're just still half that amount of load, um, with, ze with zero pounds in it, and not loaded. 230 miles ends up being somewhere around 350 miles. So it's actually more range than what you would get in your Tesla. And um, then, you know, account for a couple of um, 200 pound people, that's 400 pounds, so that's half that load. Even then, you're still gonna have somewhere 230 to 350, so like 280 uh, to 300 miles of range with that weight in the car. So that makes the 230 mile version that starts at $39,000 um, much more impressive. All right, so the next thing is everybody knows about the new Model S and Model X versions that are coming out. They've completely redid. The outside is um, very subtle changes, but the inside is very much different. It's got the um, the large, you know, horizontal screen or uh, landscape. It's got, um, you know, the screen in the back. It's got the weird yoke steering wheel, all this stuff, right? And um, everybody's been waiting on their new Model S and Model X to come out. So there, it is, has been pushed back again. It was supposed to come out this past week. Now you, um, they won't start shipping them until next week, June 10th week. And um, I guess that was what Elon said for a small tweak to the car. So um, pretty soon we will start seeing these things on the road with users getting them in some actual review videos of all the differences. Um, the Differences are pretty wild, and I'll try to make a video about that, but um, it's something that, you know, there's a lot there to question, uh, but they were, all the cars have been, and they've turned out great, so uh, it should end up really well. Speaking of the new Model S and X, another thing that popped out this week at a uh, tech conference, actually, AMD, um, you know, showed off their new chipsets with RDNA. Um, Technology, which is just a marketing name for their technology. Um, it's, the, it's the actual RDNA 2 chips, GPUs. It's the same chip that actually powers the PlayStation 5, which is a very powerful console system out there now. And it's going to be in all the new Model S's, Model X's. Now, what we've seen in the past is that Elon has said that you would have the ability to play, uh, you know, grade A games, video games in your Tesla going, you know, in the future. Um, 
he's mentioned games like Cyberpunk, for example. Um, so that's pretty neat, and this chip would give the ability to support the graphics for those games. Um, obviously, you'd have to have some computing power, which the cars already have great computing power to begin with. Um, so I don't see that as being any issue with the graphics cards that they're talking about. also means that the screen levels are going to be just phenomenal, probably 4K screen resolution on them and everything. They're going to be really nice. The next thing I guess to that would mean that they're probably going to put these in the Cybertruck, which means you could pay play Cyberpunk in your Cybertruck. That's something that sounds pretty cool to do, right? I know. Uh, would find it very hard to believe that he wouldn't want that to happen. Some non-car EV news. Um, Polaris is actually upping their marketing campaign on their um, their new all-electric Ranger. So um, I'll link the video to that in the description as well as to their site. And they basically talk about how the powertrain is just more powerful, all the testing that they go through, and you can see a lot of fun shots of that vehicle. Um, they start at uh, around $2,300, and they will be going on sale in December. Uh, you can get that in camouflaged if you want, if you want to go hunting. I mean, if you can't think of a better way to not scare away the game, uh, why not you know, cruise to your site in a very quiet UTV? Comfortable storage and everything, right? Yeah, more power, quiet, get more in tune with the nature while you're out. Um, I can't think of a better better thing. It's all coming. So starting June 3rd, which is um, tomorrow for me, you can actually place your $100 deposits down on Kia's new electric vehicle, the EV6. The EV6 is a pretty good looking vehicle. It's got around 300 miles of range and it supports 800 volt architecture. So it can actually charge at really fast rates. It's a really good looking car. Kia has really stepped up their game in the last several years. And so I expect this to be a high selling um, car. It's going to be really interesting to see these things, you know, getting reviewed and tested and um, test driven. So look forward to seeing those. So that's all the news that I'm going to go through today uh, on some personal EV news. Uh, this past weekend, I did have to take my car up, my all-wheel drive Model 3, it's a 2018, to the service center. I had them check some some rattles that I was having near the seat belts, and they fixed those for me, no, no problem, for free. And um, I got to drive a Tesla Model Y for the day. It was a loaner vehicle for about four hours that day. And just kind of you know enjoyed Charlotte in it. And one of the crazy things that I noticed about it, because I have yet to actually drive a Model Y, you do sit higher up as everyone tells you. But this, because you're sitting up, it almost feels like the suspension is more plush, the seats are more plush. Although they're the same seats and everything, they're just on risers. It felt a lot smoother of a ride. Uh, so, you know, uh, that's a good option for, for for people out there that want a larger. It felt a lot more roomier on the inside, a lot more space in the back, obviously. And um, I would say that is a really nice vehicle. And it doesn't cost much more than my car. So, um, you yeah, know, that's a good second option to the Model 3, definitely. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.